Is it still uh, painful to talk about, John? Yeah, I mean, it's a little while since. Uh, the, the main feeling for me is it's not sort of pain or anything, it's just numbness, you know. You still can't really believe it, in truth. No. Uh, still sort of feel like he's sort of there, somewhere. It was just such a crazy thing, you know. I think I felt like everyone felt, really, just, oh, God, you know, it's, it's that kind of irrational thing that you just, you can't almost think anything about. You just, you, you go between total anger and really sort of just wanting to, I don't know, yeah, but just to have some violent reaction to um, to thinking, well, what can you do about all that? You know, I think it's it's very much our modern society kind of. I think there's a lot of that happening. When did you find out John had died? Just uh, the morning, in the morning, early in the morning. But I, I sat down one day, I was just strumming along, and um, that was the sort of idea that occurred to me, was like that uh, if John was here today, and I was saying, oh, yes, I knew him well, he was a terrific guy and stuff, He'd be saying, oh, you know, a load of rubbish. It was in his character. So that's sort of what the song's about. It says, um, and if I said I really knew you well, what would your answer be? You, uh, well, knowing you, you'd probably laugh and say that we were worlds apart and so on and so on, this kind of thing. And then it says, um, if you were here today, and it's, it's about that. Do you think there's a difference uh, between music that is around now and music that was around then? Um, I hope in, so. In the 50s. Uh, yeah. But a, a difference in that, like there seemed to be a rawness about, you know, a simplicity and a rawness then that um, doesn't sort of exist today. And the, the, there seems yeah. to be a little melody in, uh, in new wave music. Yeah. Um, and yet in the 50s there was, there was great melodies uh, still associated with that. Uh, yeah, but you know, the thing is then people were saying there's no melodies in this rock and roll. Every record sounds the same, which is what they're now saying about reggae. You know, every record sounds the same. Or they say about New Wave, everything sounds the same. But I think to the fans of it, they don't sound the same. Like to us rock and roll fans, you could have never persuaded me Chuck Berry was anything like uh, Bill Haley or Little Richard. But, you know, analysts tend to sort of group it all together and sort of say, oh, I think it's pretty good music today. Um, I think the big difference probably is just the technological thing that uh, when they were making those records it was just you had to just it was a straight performance they didn't do much in overdubs well nowadays I mean you can you can record like what 92 tracks if you want yeah and that makes a difference to actually the, the sound in the end of course it, it becomes it was, very much more kind of precise it was largely the Beatles that pioneered that um, uh, multi dubbing to rock technique. Sergeant Peppers is <coughs> commonly regarded as a, as a breakthrough album. He said notes. dropping his notes. <laughs> <laughs> as bad as Michael Parkinson. Um, yeah, I suppose we did. We got it off somebody else, of course. Like all our great innovative stuff. People would say, wow, the haircuts, you know, and all that. We always used to say, well, we were only just part of it. We, we ended up being the spokesman for it and probably the most visible uh, one's out front, uh, so people thought, well, it's all us doing it. But actually, there were millions of art students at the time who had their hair like that. And uh, in the double tracking stuff and the multi track stuff, I think originally we got that off It's My Party by Leslie Gore. That was one of the first double track records I ever heard. And we just went to our engineers and said, um, you know, that record, we'd like to sound like that. And we kicked, we started with that. And of course, went over the top, as usual. <laughs> How did you and John write songs? Uh, did you actually write songs separately or together, or, or was it a combination of both? It was a combination of both. Uh, sometimes, when we first started off writing, when we were kids, uh, we used to just sit down with two guitars, like this, just, and strum sort of at each other, and sing anything. And if an idea came out, just develop it up into a song. If he had a line that I didn't like, or I had a line he didn't like, we'd just um, tell each other, say, I don't like that, so we'd, we'd just do that. Uh, that was one way we used to do it. That, that's the kind of joint compositions way. And then sometimes, like with something like yesterday, I just had the tune and, and the words, and I would just have that whole song, and I'd bring it to him and kind of say, you know, how's this? Uh, and I played it to them in the studio, the, the group, and they said, well, you don't need an awful lot on that. You know, they, I said, well, okay. Yeah. Uh, and then sometimes it'd be like Strawberry Fields and sort of ones that were more John's, like Help uh, would be John's idea. Hard Day's Night was his 
idea originally. And uh, sometimes he'd just write. In, in other words, the answer is there wasn't any formula. We did them every which way. 